questions, all of those things. You kind of know the story. So you've got a lot of things to go with. Now, how many people would like, uh, for wherever your age is right now, just let me ask you, if you could continue to age the rate you're going, how many of you would like to live to be 120? You put your hand up. See, not many hands. Uh, but if you could live like you were right now until 120, now would would you like to make it to 120? My hand's up because I would. We have that potential to do that right now. In fact, as researchers are saying, that a child born today should live somewhere between two and 400 years. That's their estimate. These people are not quacks. These are real scientists that have an extensive knowledge of, of longevity, of anti-aging, and, uh, and of aging, all of these things that come in. Well, I, I can read what they publish. I know much of this as well as they do. In fact, as many things uh, I know better than they do because they, they think in tunnel vision. That's how scientific mind works. And uh, lateral vision puts different components together so that the total that you get out of a formulation is greater than just the sum of the individual parts with it. So we have that, we have that gift that we can work with to make products that are literally to die for. These are the products, but they'll make you live. And so we're on the road to immortality right now, and we're thundering down that. How long are you going to live? I don't know, uh, but I do know this. Nobody's got a product like the age pill. There's a couple of, of them that are being sold that address NAD production. Nobody dresses on the level that we do, but that's only part of the cell. The cell's like a motor. It gets wears out. It gets built up, and your stem cells that are producing all the other cells, they start slowing down with age. So there's a bunch of factors there that take place. At one time at conception, you were one cell. And what you were is you were a stem cell. But within that, all of the components of your body was created as that cell started to divide. And stem cells are like the chicken that lays the eggs that keeps producing it. And so they start producing new cells to replace the muscle cells and the bone, and the hair, everything that's going, they, they wear out too, those replacement cells, but they're expendable. So they're gone and the stem cell replaces them. But over a great very, uh, period of time, they deteriorate to most of them to almost nothing, where your stem cell activity, if you're in your 70s, is usually somewhere two to 5%, that's it. When you're 18, it's already starting to decline on you. When you get 50, you've got about 75% of your stem cells that were there and building you when you're 20. 75% of them are dormant. And the others are in rapid decline because you're headed for the potential of dying an average age. But things are changing in our society. For the third or fourth consecutive year in a row, the average age, average lifespan has gone down year after year after year. I believe it's this, this one is four years that it's done that. Well, people are bragging about how do we, you know, we've done things to get our lifespan so, so much higher. Well, that's true in some ways because we've cured a lot of incurable diseases. But look at the real facts. Our, our medicines got better. So it used to be one in seven women and, chil and child died in childbirth. Well, think of that. Every seven women that are having a baby, one of them dies and the baby dies. With them. What do you think that does to the average lifespan? And we didn't have all the different things and people used to die of things like yellow fever. Have you heard anyone getting yellow fever? Smallpox around, all those kind of things. We've cured those. So as that's happened, then you don't have those things knocking you off all the time. And you're going along. But what's happening in the deep sea? You've got a little jellyfish and a little squid that's in there too. And that, they have been kicking around for a billion and a half years. And so they have the ability to do it. But you're on the decline. You're expendable. But we have a system to come in and to reverse that. And you have to, the first thing you have to do, it's not just quite that simple. This is quite complex and we try to make it simple.
as you can because people don't want to know about the features. They want to know about the benefits. That's what you sell. So we have this sensational line of products. What's our best product? That's easy to say. If you look at uh, our health products, the age pill is the single greatest product ever developed in the history of human health because it can take those declining stem cells and bring them back up to levels of where your biological factors that are functioning, that are left, will be running like you were in your 20s again, not like you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s as they're getting worse, so we can return those. But, so it's the single greatest product in the history of health, human health, I think. And I say, I think, for a very good reason because we're about it to introduce something that's coming out and I think it'll be out by the end of next month. We're pushing up very hard that is so technologically advanced and compatible with the age pill. Because if you understand one thing, the age pill works with the, the stem cells that are still active, still working. But as, as life goes on, they start falling off. So you have less activity and less activity and the, the stem cells don't die, they're dormant. They go into dormancy. Now, when they're declining, as they are in all of us, uh, from our teens on, that's called senes uh, senescent. And that's a decline in activity. When they become dormant, that's called senescent. And so that means it's dormant. But they're not exactly dormant. They don't reproduce anymore, but they are a horrific force to damage your health, to greatly reduce your lifespan. They cause most of the major diseases because they exude toxins and these toxins go in and they actually are, are coming out. Now this is a hypothesis, but I believe this and some other researchers do too. And it makes absolutely to me logical conclusions of it. The, the dormant stem cells want to be replaced. And the body does replace them through normal uh, processes. And usually it's called apoptosis. And that's a word for, uh, for cell death, apoptosis. Now it's not one you're common, you're used to, but you'll, you'll get to know it because apoptosis is an epigenetic response uh, to the products that you take or the products that the body produces to try and get rid of them. The problem is as you get older, that declines a lot and then your immune system, which has been with you from birth, it is deteriorating, going down, wearing out, and you see a tremendous decays and degeneration. In fact, as if you look for, as an example, uh, with women, women are very vulnerable to toxins, much more than we are, because many of those are estrogenic driven, and they cause so many uh, problems, weight, weight gain, uh, breast cancer, uh, heart attacks, uh, women's heart attacks are higher than men's in rate, and yet they live a cleaner, better life, but they're so vulnerable to these toxins. So if you take three generations of women that are here, if you take the daughter and the mother and the grandmother, there has been more evolutionary genetic change within their DNA in these three generations than there has in the past 2000 years of women. So we have a huge assault that's coming on there. Now, if you don't, you want to disregard it, well, you certainly can. Oh, it's not, I'm okay now, but you're not going to be okay soon. These things change. The only constant thing is really change. And so if, if we can, if we know what the causes are now, and this is where science is so good, we can do something specific about it. So now you sit there and let's say when you're young, you have, stem cells in this range, all functioning. But then as you get older, the functionality is going down and down. So what happens to all these that have gone dormant? Pretty soon you got this big amount that is dormant, this small amount that is active and it's decreasing with it. Well, the age pill can come in and take these that are still there and it can overhaul the motor, so to speak. That's uh, basic terminology, it's easy to comprehend. Just like a motor runs out with time and wear, your stem cells do the same thing too. But it has its own internal mechanism within it to uh, re repair, regenerate itself and uh, restore itself to like it was. And so uh, that's a complex product. And while people talk about NAD, 
that's only part of the story. The thing you have to do is the placking because it consumes a lot of glucose, sugar oxidizes it and gets sticky and it just gums up the, uh, the organella that's within the stem cell itself. So it starts uh, like plaque on your teeth. It's exactly the same process uh, with it. Then the other thing is since stem cells will put out millions of cells uh, in their lifetime, many of these, and when that happens, uh, of course, they start wearing out and go and things uh, that have taken a lot of nutrients, produce it and they divide, take in all those nutrients to a set cell. Then it divides and goes away and you're left with what you got, you have left. And that happens again, that happens again. So as, as that kind of thing happens, uh, it takes a tremendous amount of nutrition and everything that goes into the cell does not come out of it. It doesn't come out of it when it divides. It does when it divides. And the byproducts from metabolic activity, because they're just like the Krebs cycle within your stem cell to create energy is 27 separate steps in order to get through the Krebs cycle. And that's just one of the cycles going on. So as they, the organella make these different types of changes within it, what happens is there's cellular garbage left over and there's portals in a hole, just like a, in your sink, the basin, you have a hole, okay? Well, if you pull the, the plug up, then it shuts and it'll hold the water. You let it go, it goes out. But what happens is it's letting things out, but fat soluble molecules of a certain type, uh, of course, are not really solu soluble in water. These are absolutely insoluble in water and they build up and they're sticky. So they start sticking together because they're, they're fatty structures. And so it becomes larger, the glob becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And since the inside of your cell is cytoplasm, which is water-based, suddenly it's getting plugged up with uh, oil-based uh, contamination, libel fusion, which is impeding the transfer of nutrients, the discharge of waste and all that, and you're full of cellular garbage. And so as a consequence, we address that. So the first one blacking up, that's called glycation. Say it's from the glucose that is oxidized. So that films and coats and sticks and caramelizes and hardens so the structure can't work. Then you fill up with cellular garbage. Now, if you can produce NAD, you're not gonna produce nearly as much of it. And it's gonna be all inhibited because of that. So let's deplaque. Let's drain the swamp, so to speak, so that that comes out. But it the body is doing that. It actually is. But as you as you age, everything goes down, and as a consequence, uh, if you if you uh, give the right nutrients to it, they're like nutraceuticals. There's a process called which is n new to most of you. It's epigenetics, and it's the genetic response in the DNA to the nutrients that are there. So a lot of these things that were virtually science fiction and, and a hypothesis years ago, not many years ago, some of them even three, two or three years ago are now reality and proven and done. The problem is, uh, in my opinion, uh, those that are trying to do something about it, they're taking a quick fix or taking a magic bullet, but there is no magic bullet. You need a number of, th there's one maybe that does things the most, but how about the rest of them? You need a lot doing it. And if you do, that's where the total of the effect of the ingredients is greater than the sum of, of them in a given formulation. So we know what the epigenetics are. We know what the nutraceuticals are that have been discovered, that have been done. And that's what we're putting together in it so you can take care of those stem cells. So now let's go back. Here's all the dormant ones. They're exuding these toxins that cause cancer and and degeneration of your organs, your heart, your lung, your eyes, your muscles, all of that. So they're, they're uh, doing all of those things and they try to attract that immune system to come in and trigger their epigenetic code uh, or epigen their genetic code with epigenetics, create apoptosis and down they go. And so uh, the body does that, it has the ability to do it but we just get, we get too deteriorated. Decay, 
uh, aging is nothing. It's not a disease. It's decay and degeneration. If you end decay and you can regenerate more cells than you're losing, you're going to grow younger. Uh, but there's a limit because you've got so much dormant. So here is what the latest discovery coming out is. It's in a science called senolytics. You'll learn that term maybe. But senolytics is where the ingredients are put for epigenetic contact that will support the body's functions to take those dormant, dead, talk, or not dead, dormant, toxic stem cells that are such a serious health hazard and commit salpitosis. It, it dies and then it, it cleans up with it. But where it came, it's like, uh, I tell people it's like a rose. If you have a rose garden, you have a lot of beautiful roses in it, but as the season goes on, if you don't do anything with it, pretty soon the, most of them have lost their, their petals and you only have a few that are there. But if you go out and you snip it off at the bud, it'll grow a brand new rose. This is the same principle that we're talking about here with uh, stem cells that are senescent, dormant. And so we have the ingredients. This is what is so fabulous. This research is being done by one of the major research centers in the world. You would all know them on what they're doing. They found one thing. Well, they found a few others, but they're concentrating on one that which is the best. And, and they're correct for my, my knowledge is it's for the best, but they're trying to make a synthetic molecule out of them. They're doing some patents because you can't patent a God-given ingredient, natural ingredient with it. So as that happens, they're anticipating that a monthly treatment to of senolytics to trigger the apoptosis, the cell death, and then a new stem cell pops up, new, young, like you were before, that pops up. And they figure it's between a two and $5,000 a month uh, sale that they'll make to people that can do it. Well, who can afford that? And they say, well, maybe my insurance will cover it. What do you think your premiums are going to be on that kind of thing? So all of those different factors are going. Now, I've gone on for a fair amount of time on it to tell you what these are. And, and the, the system is, is uh, incomplete without senolytics. So we are moving boldly where no one has gone before. And I have a senolytic formulation ready to deliver to you and I'm going to deliver it within a month. It is not one, count them. It is six of the most different, diverse senolytic agents that you've ever seen in your life. They have immense amounts of power for apoptosis with stem cells, and there's 220 varieties, so one size does not fit all, but I think what we have is we can pretty well get them all to do it. So suddenly this field of dormancy with a small field of activity, now you'll start to build it back and come back. And with that, I, that's why I think it's greater than even the age field, which is taking what's declining and bringing it up. This takes what is dormant and brings it back. And, and the age field is bringing them up. And the two of them together, one and one is not two. It's like a hundred with what this thing can do. The only other factors is you have to keep, there's a mechanism that keeps the cells going and uh, it's called telomeres and they tell it when to divide and how often. You lose units every time a new cell divides because those telomeres are used for the, for the network to weave the new cell on. So a cell, as telomere rates go down, you lose cells. And, and when you lose, uh, you lose cells because it's not telling it to duplicate as often. So that's where TX, uh, TSX comes in because it supports the telomeres to be remain long. And, and they calibrate your biological age. Right now they're doing it through telomeres. And they say, you're born, when you're born, you've got about 10,000. When you die, you're down between five and 6,000. You lose eight to 10% every, after you've grown, after you get up to about 18 or 20, you lose eight to 10% every 10 years with it. So when of your telomere lengths, so as the time goes, the rate of duplication starts to go down, see? So TSX can come back in. It works through epigenetics too. It works in the stem cells to take them because only stem cells have telomeres on the chromosomes to support the mechanisms to keep them long and dividing all of the time as fast as you want it. So 
that's the key one. So if you have the age pill, you, you have uh, TSX to support long telomeres, you're, you're, you're supporting the repair with the age pill, you're supporting uh, long telomeres with TSX, and then you bring the senolytics in and you have the ones that have become dormant through a lifetime of use that are there creating a serious health hazard, shazam, they're gone. And they won't all go like that, but they'll start going, kind of like playing notes on a, on a piano. You know, you start, you hit so many and you get a certain sound. The more you do it, the more you lose. So if you lost them all, you'd be probably kill you. You'd be uh, very sick and that's probably, there's no science for that. But here's the point. What we have figured out is uh, I've gotten the formula based on the sciences of their sake. It's been a mind boggling work to get this down. But now with it, we have it to where if, you, if you're really taking uh, this product, you're going to see a effect that's gonna be gradual, getting better, 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 better. And so this is gonna be an unusual product because I was initially gonna call it the bomb because what it does, it works like a bomb. If you drop a bomb, it blows up things, explode and there's all kinds of rubble. Then you gotta clean it up. Well, that's the elementary <laughs> explanation of the mechanism, what it's just done. So as that happens, you'll take uh, some capsules, uh, three, uh, you'll take those every other day and only one time in the day. You take them all at once and you take them every other day. Now, if you feel it's maybe making you a little queasy, that then take it every third day with it. But I think for most of us, just calculating this, so it's, it's a guesstimate, but every other day, a day to bomb, a day to clean up the debris from the apoptosis that these epigenic reactions that cause uh, the cells to deteriorate are cleaned up by the immune system. Bomb it one day, clean it up the next, and you can bomb it again. So you get more and more and more and more, and you start coming back up. These that were dormant will start coming back up. Those that are declining will come up, and pretty soon east meets west, and what have you got? A new you. In fact, scientists are, are Audrey de Grey, who's probably the greatest, most knowledgeable one of that, says that um, he sees in a concept that he sees the immortality as possible. I, I see that too. And it's not because it's unusual or it's quackery, because it is happening right now. Uh, and there's organisms that live, you can send them into space where everything dies, they come back alive and they continue to function with it. You can put them in the hottest water or fluids and they don't die, they come back. These things are biologically driven. So now that we have sciences approved or improved so much, we're able to find out what they are determinate and then see what discoveries have been made uh, on this specific situation. And we just keep the file building and going as we get it. Now we're to the point of where we could have come out with a single product. It ain't enough uh, with our senolytic formulation. It ain't enough with the age pill. It ain't enough with TSX. But put together, we've got the complex formulas there to do those three jobs. Now, the only thing that's really left is how is this world created? Do you know there'd be no life on earth if it wasn't for sun, the sun? And of course, you know, yeah, I think I'm kind of a dummy. I have to tell you that, you know that. I'm not a dummy, but here's the point. What does the sun send down? It sends down sunlight. It sends down ultraviolet light that you can't see. It sends down infrared light that you cannot see and visible light. Uh, all three of them age you, uh, but certain wavelengths, and I won't go through it, but in infrared can actually stimulate skin, hair, a bunch of things like that. But that's, that's the energy. And when they come in, they have photons, have hydrogen. And they come down and chlorophyll in the leaves sp split that hydrogen off. And it takes it and it makes, you've heard of hydrocarbons. They could, there's hydrogen in the carbon. 
that, that's there. And so what it does is it makes uh, hydrogen based uh, ingredients that are really the true molecule of life that's there. And hydrogen has enormous power. A, a, an atom of hydrogen, uh, if, or excuse me, a given volume of hydrogen compared with the same volume of gasoline, hydrogen has three to four times more power and energy in it. And every cell in your body creates it. Well, it doesn't create it. It comes there from the food we eat or supplements that we take. And so we can be depleted because of a variety of things. But here's where the H2 stick comes in. You take that and it floods your body. They estimate in about two minutes, you've got hydrogen through your whole body into your 30 or 40 trillion cells virtually. I mean, you can't say absolutely, but you do that. And what does that do? Well, the cells are going through these processes, making things, but to make the energy component in this long series that's through the Krebs cycle, it gets to the point where the NAD, which has been the key thing, and that's what the age pill is designed to maximize with it, is converted to ATP. And at that point, that energy, and then the hydrogen is released, and it's called biological hydrogen. And that, through a conversion process, becomes electrical energy. And that's what you are. You are an electrical en entity. You have about 60,000 calculations going on in your brain right now. You have it night and day all the time that you're there and they're all running on electricity. Every cell within your body is connected to every other cell in your body. And it's not just through one network. So far they found out just over the last one and two years that there are three networks of electronic uh, communication between cells. So that when you damage something here, another part of it knows how to respond with that, that cellular communication is, is really significant and important. So when you consider what we can do with hydrogen, which hydrogen gets used up, but if you take the hydrogen with it, you, you can get it to, uh, and I won't, I could get too complex on this, but uh, you can you can take hydrogen and you make it in foods. There's one last little thing that you need for it, but it goes more with the age pill in the process, and that is you need something that um, is a methyl donor. Now, that might sound like a chemical, which it actually is, but it's an organic one. But it's what's found in dark green leafy vegetables, things like uh, broccoli, spinach, asparagus, avocados, dark green ones like that, they're loaded with it. So if you put those into your diet, those will, will turn, uh, they'll release methyl, which is uh, the energy that has to be changed from DNA or from NAD to the ATP has to go through a process called methylization. So that's the only thing. Sometimes people take it and they say, oh, I'm not feeling what I did off it. Yeah, they're probably out of methyl. Their methyl reserves get consumed up if you're getting a tremendous amount of NAD being uh, being produced. So it makes sense if we can, you, you can take something, you can take a supplement. Methylfolate's a good one or methyl, if you want a, a B12, you can take methylcobalamin and, or B12 and, and gives you the methyl that you need for it. That's a little teeny thing and soon, the age pill will contain that in so you don't even have to look for another supplement. Most people don't need it, but enough do. So we're trying to cover all the bases. Okay, so there's, there's the big mission. We have four pillars, just like you have four legs on a table to hold this thing up. And these four pillars are the age pill, TSX, the senolytic product, and diatomic hydrogen water for doing that. Now there's a lot of other things you can use for, I mean, we got toes, don't we? You got a liver and you got teeth and stomach and all those things, eyes. So we have specific formulations that supercharge that if you're having an issue or if you don't want to have that issue, use it early on. So uh, you might say, well, gee, I went through life and I've taken all these supplements and nothing's happened. Well, that's kind of a blessing, don't you think? nothing happened. So now you have a chance for yourself to, if you take your lifespan, 
and I'm sorry I'm going too long. I'm not trying to speed it up. But if you take your lifespan and you realize that how many years has he got left? Have you got 20 years? Okay, well, we think, I think, this is a guesstimate. This is the hypothesis with it. But you see it in animal models where it's working with it. And the mechanisms are the same in all mammals uh, within this, these processes. And we think if you've got 20 years left in your life, and the average lifespan now is down into the mid-70s, okay? It was up in the 80s. Now it's down in the mid-70s. But if it, let's, so let's say you were 55 and you had 20 years you got 20 of the worst years that are coming on. They get worse and worse and worse. And what's worse than spending the last five or 10 years in a nursing home where you're batting balloons for entertainment. They're changing your diaper and spoon feeding you. Your body has the ability to avoid that. You can sidestep it if you have the right epigenetic compounds that will work with it. So I'm kind of like the, uh, the greyhound uh, bus driver. It said, leave the driving to us. Okay, so I can give you these things. I can tell you enough about them and you can go out and market them. So with that, you can have a great deal of success in your own personal health. How many other people want that? The, the biggest issue you're going to have is people uh, because they're going to, oh, I don't believe that. No, it can't work. And they, they're thinking of the Shazam theory that they'll take an age pill and they'll wake up and they'll be a teenager again. It doesn't work that way. There's a gradual decline over your lifespan and there's a gradual incline that can come back just the, just the opposite way. If you know what you're doing, you have the things. Science has advanced to that point that I believe that is theoretically and practically uh, possible to do.